what's up goddess gang today we are back with another video and you guys today i'm so excited we're finally using the rosalyn gel polishes it was a 20 piece collection and this is the set that i created it's giving ice cream nail vibes and i actually did them on the uh e nail uh i think these are called xl pipe nails you guys will see but i did them on this shape instead of a stiletto shape because i wanted them to look kind of girly and cute i wanted them to appease to people who like shorter nails as opposed to like xxl nails so that was the thought that i had for that and here's the product you guys have seen me unbox this in a previous video so i will go ahead and link that video in my blog post for this video And these are the colors the ones that I have propped up. They're basically all the colors that I used for this set But I'll go ahead and make a note of that information later for you guys, too And I don't know if you guys have noticed but I have kind of ventured off into creating into creating press-on nail sets and the reason for that is because I really wanted to be able to um, do more nail designs and doing my real nails is like well everyone knows everything nail related is time consuming but just doing my own nails was getting like a little overwhelming between the lamp and the products and my natural nails just wanted a rest not even my real nails but like the skin around your nails sometimes it just wants a rest so that's why you guys are seeing that i am creating press on sets lately <music> All right, you guys, so walking straight into the actual design, I did use the Rosalind Gel Polishes, the SXC Max, SXC Cosmetics um, Matte Top Coat, and then the Lanfo Shiny Top Coat, and I'm also using this uh, Solid Nail Chip Gel by Born Pretty, and that's what we're going to use to shape our ice cream. Honestly, in the end result, I wasn't that happy with how my ice cream looked, but I just haven't mastered it yet. I'm going to have to do some research because I see some people create ice cream nails and they look so legit. Mine always look cute, but they just don't give ice cream vibes. I don't know why, but whatever. So this video is a little longer today. I did go ahead and um, I basically did the video kind of like in a tutorial format so you guys can follow along with each finger this video is going to be good for any of the beginner diy nail girls or like if you're trying to learn new nail designs and i wanted to create this nail set to be super 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 simple and it looks intricate but it's really not if you can draw some lines and you can you know roll some solid uh nail tip gel into a ball and like make it look a little funky or whatever then you can definitely do this nail set and i also have been trying to do that a lot more on my channels like i want you guys to be able to create these nail sets that i'm creating um sometimes you guys will inbox me and your beginner diy nail girls and it's like you know what i really i know that i share products with you guys and you know i let you watch me work but i also want to do like tutorial style videos and so that's what this is so you guys are going to see me go from one nail to the next now i'm going to complete the entire nail before moving on to the next one and that includes the top coat so it will feel a little redundant i think maybe towards the end but the purpose is that you all can learn and definitely drop a comment down below and let me know if you like that um, as a creator sometimes it can be a little hard to always like know what your audience takes to or like what they are really wanting because sometimes you might want to learn how to do nail designs other times you may want to learn how to do press on designs or you may want to learn how to do acrylic designs or gel designs so there's so many different ways that I can go with my channel and I, I kind of always feel like I need someone to help me so that's what you guys are here for just drop a comment or instant uh, direct message me on Instagram and let me know what you guys want I do have a couple of requests that I am going to be doing soon I've been waiting to do those um, so you guys will see if you have requested some designs already you guys are going to see that those will appear before long and 
otherwise, uh, long time no talk, I low-key went into like this, um, it's kind of like an obsessive compulsive thing where I knew that I wanted to get a mic for my videos and I have been wanting to do it for a long time and I was tired of just making it work on my phone I'm like no it'll be fine it'll be fine but then sometimes the voiceovers will be like a hit or a miss and that slows down slows down my production time because it's like a mental barrier for me so last time I told you guys I'm gonna get a mic you guys I promise and so my last video I didn't have my mic yet I was I had my mic but I didn't have everything I needed for it yet so I was pretty bummed but this time I have my mic set up so you guys let me know if you can tell a difference in the audio and what your thoughts are as far as that's concerned um, I did buy a mic but I can always buy another one if this one's not perfect so far I do like it uh, so I'm super excited about that and other than that that's kind of been like subconsciously why I haven't posted in a couple of days um, I do have a couple of updates for you guys but I'm gonna save that for a couple of minutes from now because I have been talking a lot and I feel like it's overwhelming so I'll be back in a minute you guys <laughs> All right, you guys, so I do have a little nail art hack for you or more or less just like an actual tip. Um, I don't know if you guys are new to nail art. I am I'm definitely new to hand drawn nail art. And I've always seen a lot of um, the artists that I see and they are doing the nail art and they do so well. And I always wondered why. And I had a feeling that it went back to the brushes that I was using. I wasn't using the proper nail art brushes. And I would normally, you guys see on this brush, the hairs are very long. Well, normally I would use a brush similar to this, but the hairs will be very short. And I have learned that you have more flow control when you use this longer brush. It's very awkward. It's very weird. Um, 
my brain didn't wrap around it or take a liking to it very well at first. But after this nail set, I, I actually can see the importance of using this type of nail art brush. So if you do notice that you've been doing nail art for a while and like your lines are not turning out as good as other people's lines or your details not as precise, I would say to try to use a brush like the one I'm using today for my nail art. Of course, I'm only drawing lines and um you know there's not really a good example here i will do another video in the future where i'll try this and see how it works for me but something about that brush one it can hold more paint which means you can drag it a longer distance you can flow the paint a little more easily but two something about how it's able to like have these little awkward angles and stuff is very helpful so i definitely do want to give you guys that point because that's a struggling point that i've had in my nail journey for a while and when i use this brush actually i have another brush almost identical to it but it has the short the short bristle and um i looked at that one and i looked at this one that i'm using and i was like no i'm definitely not using that one because you know it doesn't work as good so i want to give you guys a little bit of insight well now we're working on this one and it's just straight lines I actually find these ones to be the most like mentally absorbing <laughs> like they take everything you have inside of yourself they want it all and so I think I did really good and I'm so proud of myself um I have learned how to breathe while I do my nail art um it sounds weird right but when I first started on the Winnie the Pooh nail set I noticed I'm like man I'm not breathing between like these strokes you know like I need to take a breath I'm just so focused you literally focus so hard that you hold your breath I don't know if you guys pay attention but breathing while doing nail art is actually a skill you guys
Okay, you guys, so I do have some updates for you guys. I've been waiting and I'm so excited. Honestly, it's taken a lot of prayer and meditation to be able to get to where I am right now as far as like having organization in my life and being able to succeed on this journey and also um, having the wherewithal to keep going, keep striving, keep pushing forward because this journey has not been easy. It's been far from easy and it's been very costly um honestly you guys to be totally honest there's like two different categories i feel when it comes to this stuff there's like well there's really three there's the people who come into this business and it's like their dream ever since they first knew what their dream was that's one and then there's other people who come into the business and they're kind of like testing the waters or whatever they're seeing how it goes and but they don't have like a lot of things holding them back from taking that next step in this career if it's what they really want and then there's people like me who we really are obsessed with this but we have so many other things going on in our lives that we can't just pour everything into this even if we want to and no matter how hard we try and so um, that's just like three of the main categories that I have observed in the industry, um, you know, DIY nail community, nail tech community and things like that. Well, my point in saying that is that um, it's it's hard when you when you're at a point in your life, you you let's just say you just wake up one day, you say, I'm tired of work and I want to work for myself. I want to do things that I love. And that's kind of like what throws you into this um category of like career paths if you didn't really dream of it from the first day like you know you just wake up one day and you're like well I have I have these plans but honestly I really like nail art I, I think I'm just gonna go for that instead and see how it works out and so what you don't realize is like I guess it's like I don't really know how to describe it if you guys can tell but the point is that it's kind of like it's a hobby it starts off as a hobby or something you like but then it turns into like wow I really enjoy this I could do this all the time and then it's like well now we have social media and you know it's 2022 or whatever you can make money off of anything there's no price cap to what value something is or it's just all perception and that's what opens us up to this opportunity I can say when I was in high school never did it occur to me like hey you can be a DIY nail tech you know at home <laughs> just get on YouTube like that never occurs to me right I didn't even know that that was in my my options my arsenal so um but nevertheless so you're going into this and you're like you know it's kind of like a torn feeling because you're going into it as a hobby and a passion but then you also see that there is a return on the investment or there's a possible return on the investment um, monetary wise and so uh, for me that was like okay listen I want to make money off of this because like I love it and I want to do this and I want to provide for my family with this opportunity and I want to make this opportunity available to other people and future generations and I want this to be like a lifestyle so that's where I am and the thing is that unfortunately this doesn't come before everything else in my life as much as I would love for my passions to come first in my life or you know my hobbies to be the first thing that I tend to every morning and things like that it's just not the reality for me so it's been hard um one because you don't really expect to go into your hobby and spend thousands of dollars like if you guys knew how much money has been invested into this hobby it's just like it's almost embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. So that's the main point that I'm getting to is like, this has been a sacrifice. This has been a struggle. This has been a pleasure as well. It's been awesome being able to do things that I love, being able to collaborate with brands, being able to be into the community and meet new people and have new experiences and on a professional realm and a personal realm. And so I'm really thankful for that. But I also am kind of at the point where if, if this is not something that's going to prosper me, then I need to step back from it. And I'm definitely not stepping back from it. So that means that I need this to prosper me. I need to prosper um, in this area of my life. And so I definitely want to ask you guys to pray for me because last time I asked you guys to pray for me, you did. And I don't remember what happened, but I remember that after it happened and I was like, Samantha, you asked them to pray for you. They must have done it because you guys y'all's support is 
magnificent and powerful. And I want to be powerful for you guys too. Like I want you to feel empowered by, you know, the community that I'm building here on YouTube and on Instagram as well. Goddess gang stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, you guys, I wasn't in the mood to do that, but I, it just came to mind. But moving on to what I'm getting to is that um, I have had a lot of time to reflect and a lot of time to meditate. I have um, crossed that hurdle in this journey where it's like, I hope it pays off. I hope it pays off. Oh, if it pays off. No, it's going to pay off. I am going to force it to pay off. Okay. And with that, there's going to have to be a lot of focus and a lot of determination and a lot of teamwork. Um, I realize it takes a lot of teamwork. And when you're in this community, it gets tough because you have you have one perception that ha people have of you is like, oh, she's so cool. You know, she's DIY nails and they want to support you. And then on the other side, it's like, oh, she's so cool. She's DIY nails. But like, like she's too cool. You know what I'm saying? She's already like, she's too, she's her. She has like, I just feel like sometimes people see like, oh, that you're super cool or you're super popular or whatever. And they're like, they feel like you don't really have time for them or you don't really have the attention span for them or they're irrelevant to you or you're too good for them, in other words. And I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I just want to let you guys know that at no point in my career do I feel that I will be at that point where I'm going to be like, oh, I'm too good, you know what I'm saying? Or, oh, I don't have time, or, oh, this is an inconvenience to me because that's not what this journey was founded upon. I have not founded this journey upon, you know, self-righteousness or, you know, being stuck up or, you know, like entitlement and stuff like that. Um, I owe everything to you guys for supporting me and for being here for me. And I always kind of stray away from this topic whenever I get to it on my videos but I am going to make this video the video um, because I was looking online and I don't know if you guys have ever seen on YouTube there's a YouTube channel called psych to go and psych to go they talk a lot about a lot of different psychologists like psychology related topics um, mental illnesses mental strengths weaknesses uh, just uh, relieving stim uh, the stigma of a lot of the um, illnesses and spreading a lot of knowledge to help people understand um, some people have family members who have mental health struggles or so on and so forth and so that that channel is there to help those people too, not just the people who are struggling with the mental health problems. So um, that's just a little bit of background. But the point that I'm getting to that I always avoid is that I want to talk to you guys about like the truth of my journey. And, and I know if you guys have been on my channel, you've heard like glimpses into this conversation. And this is going to be the video where I just go out and say it because on psych to go there was um this post and they were asking like questions about you know a certain uh, mental disorder and what people would like to know about it because they're going to be talking about it soon and one of my questions was like do people with this mental disorder actually stray naturally from getting professional help or from you know being transparent about their shortcoming publicly just because as a direct result of the illness itself so without being too specific if you have an illness that kind of naturally pushes you to stay away from people or to be very private or to you know whatever to be hyper conscious of how people perceive you stuff like that does that would that imply that we're safe to assume that those people wouldn't really seek help or wouldn't really be open and transparent about their downfall or their shortcoming or their mental health struggle because of the actual characteristic of the mental health dilemma? So it's like, I'm not going to go seek help if I don't want help or if I don't think I need help or if I don't want people to perceive me you know, as a weaker party because of my mental health struggle or, you know, because I'm concerned about my, my public reputation. So when I saw that um, in the comments that there was other people who kind of had a similar perspective is like, you know, are people with this disorder less likely to seek help because of the disorder itself? And then I was like, wow, that's amazing because that is the truth, I feel. If, you know, I honestly, I struggle with this disorder. So I think I'm a, I'm a person who can 
uh, kind of rep, you know, for it or whatever, I can give you more or less a good a breakdown of how it is to be on the pers- perspective of the person who's suffering from that illness. And so I realized that the reason I don't speak about it is because I don't want to be judged. I don't want people to misperceive me or to think like, oh, well, we know that this is a direct result of that, or it's just the stigma that comes with this illness in particular. Um, so that's basically where my head is at as far as that's concerned as far as um like what is finally getting me to speak to you guys but i will say as a strong disclaimer i do not feel comfortable speaking about this i do not feel comfortable um labeling myself i definitely don't feel comfortable quote unquote self-diagnosing myself i do not want any comments telling me about you know self-diagnosing yourself or anything like that simply because um, it's not a self-diagnosis. Um, you would have to be the person struggling to kind of see it from their perspective. And if you can relate, definitely drop a comment down below. Um, because the thing is you have to get to a breaking point to discover that you have a mental illness to begin with. You have to struggle with this over and over and over and over and over every single day and every single interaction and every single setting. It doesn't matter if you're at work. It doesn't matter if it's your family, your friends, strangers, you have to go through this every single day for time and time and time and time and time before you will actually say, Hey, Maybe they're not the problem. Maybe I am the problem. And that is what's like monumental to begin with is like, okay, I am the problem, you know? And and as someone suffering from mental health issues, how likely are you to identify yourself as the problem? It's very unlikely, I feel. You can think of like a narcissistic type of personality or a bipolar personality or a multiple personality disorder uh, where you you don't really identify with that version of yourself because you're not really in tune with yourself to identify with one or multiple versions of yourself. And so it was finally where I got to a breaking point where I realized my kids are getting older and anything that happens around them has an impact on them mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially in their future. Um, and I'm a living proof of that, right, from my childhood. And so I decided that I needed to be honest with myself about what was going on, whether I liked it or not, whether I agreed with it or not. And I started to listen to some of the things that people would tell me. And also, if you pray, then things begin to get revealed to you. And things were beginning to get revealed to me. Uh, I had one friend and he swore that I had 20 one time he said oh is this number 27 so he swore that I had lots of personalities and I was like I don't think so um and then when I was younger people would think that I had like bipolar disorder but I definitely don't have that and um you know stuff like that so anyways one of my um actually my ex in my previous relationship he made it more clear to me because he's like uh you can only go three to four days before you explode He's like, after th- after the third day, almost nine times out of 10 on the fourth day, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. I'm like, oh my God, okay, whatever. So I started to pay attention to it, but it still didn't make sense. Like the like uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Tisa, she says, the math wasn't mathing. It wasn't mathing. And so I, I was still at a loss, honestly. I didn't know. And I just continued to focus on myself. And that's how I discovered the nail journey, um, the nail community. And I started my nail journey was because I figured I might not be able to figure out why I'm behaving this way or what what the underlying cause is. But if I can at least focus on distracting myself, because I knew something revolving around my emotions, my volatile emotions and and reckless emotions you know one minute good one minute bad and it was just I couldn't understand it and so um I started to do nails and I was like I need to put this energy into something artistic that I can benefit from and so I did and that worked well but it still wasn't solving my dilemma it was like you would think it was just like oh I just need to channel this negative energy into something positive it was deeper than that And it was so deep that you guys probably have heard me say that I was literally breaking up with my boyfriend every single month. And then 
I think it got really extra like out of control when I started to break up with him like every week. And I was just like, this is where I draw the line. Like, I know I'm breaking up with him every month. But I don't need to break up with him every week, like a period every month. I can use that as my excuse. I don't have an excuse for every single week. I need to help myself. So long story short, I went online. I was like, I need to assess myself because I don't believe in going to the doctors. I don't believe in the secular world of mental health and that's another story that i can talk to you guys about um it's very personal it's very sensitive topic for me and very passionate but um it's not that i don't believe in those things it's that i don't believe in the practices of the world as it pertains to those things um And so that's all I'm going to leave that at because I don't want to be controversial on here. And if you guys understand, drop a comment down below if you agree with me or if you're on that train of thought, too. If we have some similarities in how we perceive those topics, definitely let me know because I I do want this to be a safe space. I do see that in the future, this will be an open forum for conversations like this. So I definitely want us to have that established and build that foundation while we while we're here now, you know, at the beginning. Um, But anyways. So I finally went online and I assessed myself for like all the different mental health or mental disorders that I thought that I was struggling with or could possibly be struggling with. And I'm I hate to say this, you guys, but I'm pretty narcissistic and um, I'm not in denial about that. I am very narcissistic, but not in a negative way. I'm I'm like, you know how there is a white witch and there is a black witch. I'm a white witch. And so I'm a white narcissist, (laughs) if you get what I mean. Um, But uh, so that was that was interesting to learn, but I did not have multiple personality disorder. I did not have bipolar disorder, uh, but there was a disorder that I was like 100% identifying with. Not like 60, not like 50, not like, no, 100% identifying with. And I will say that when I was able to finally come ac- across this assessment that helped me figure out what disorder I was suffering from that it was like um I want to say it's like um I don't know how to explain it because I it the feeling is 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 such a monumental feeling I guess you could say it's like I want to give you guys a different few different ideas, okay? For a guy, it's like when you get your first your first motorcycle, okay? Uh, for a girl, it might be similar. It's like when you finally give birth to your baby after waiting for nine long months and going through labor for eighteen hours, like that, or. Uh, like for a, a, a student, it's like when you finally pass that fucking bar exam in law school like that. That is the feeling that I got when I or one last one, you guys, when you're at the restaurant, and they're taking fucking 50 minutes for your order and you finally it comes to your table. You're like, yes, like that feeling. That is how I felt when I was finally able to identify with the disorder that identified with me okay and so I know I told you guys on a previous video that I wasn't going to tell you what it is but um, I have had a change of heart simply because of the stigma surrounding this mental disorder and I want to be one of the people that helps evolve this stigma but not only that the people who are suffering from this illness um i want to be here for you guys from a place of i know how it feels and we are in this together and um i'm here for everybody you know we're all in this together but the people who are suffering from this thing in particular definitely am here with you um and i think when i tell you guys what it is that it will make more sense as to why sometimes i'm like really all the way here and sometimes i'm like not all the way here and i'm absent for a little while even on social media but How do you guys like this nail set? How do you like this video? How do you like our bonding time? How have you guys liked my blog posts lately? Just how have you guys liked seeing me on Snapchat? If you added me on Snapchat, be sure to go ahead and drop a comment down below and rep yo set, baby goddess gang up in this B. And uh, yeah, so anyways, we're finishing up this nail design. And before we go, I'm going to let you guys know that I am actually suffer from a mental disorder called 
borderline personality disorder, BPD. It is not the same as multiple personality disorder, which has actually been renamed as I identity dissociative disorder, I think it's called now. But a borderline personality disorder, in short, before we go, is basically like I don't know how to describe it. I guess you guys can go do your research because I don't it's like it to me it feels like it's all of them wrapped up into one except for yeah, like it don't have disassociative identi and identity disorder. But um oh yeah, disassociative identity disorder, D I D. That's the new name for um multiple personality disorder. I feel like that that is the correct name for multiple personality disorder is correctly named now disassociative um identity disorder which means that you are disassociating with your current identity and you're acquiring a completely new identity for me i feel like um borderline personality disorder is more along the terms of what you would consider multiple personality disorders like you have multiple personalities that you display so for instance one minute I might be super clingy and affectionate and energetic and all of that. The next minute, if there's something that triggers me emotionally or mentally, um, I could just explode. Like literally, I could explode. Um, uh, it's not only stuff like that, though, too. It can be stuff like sometimes you will go into a deep depression and you can't do anything. You literally, no matter how much you want to inside of you you are so hurt you cannot function and then the flip side is that um other times you may so that's kind of like a open display of your feelings and then on the flip side there's kind of like where you may mask your feelings so you may say hey um I'm just going to work. I'm going to work nonstop and I'm not going to have any feelings and I'm just going to get through this like that. And that ends up crippling you too. Like it's a long story guys. And it's very deep, but I love you guys so much. Here's the nail set. I'm thankful. I finally got to talk to you guys about that. Definitely send prayers my way. Um, but I just want to do my part in this community and you guys are going to see me opening up more and branching out more as far as my purpose here and if you guys got value from this video whether it be the nail design or the voiceover and you know the interactions that we have definitely go ahead and smash that like button if you are not subscribed already you can subscribe so that that way you can turn on the notification bell and get notifications every time i upload i am working on daily uploads and i love you guys so much thank you so much rosalind for this gel polish kit i definitely recommend it i will go ahead and leave a link down below so you guys can check it out out too and I holla y'all peace